listening to our chief duck, the best damn Kansas City Chiefs podcast in the kingdom. Chiefs Kingdom, welcome back to All Chiefed Up. I'm Steve Williams. I'm here with my other co-host, Mike Williams. And today we're going to be talking about post-draft Kansas City Chiefs. So I think everyone's post-draft hangover is starting to fade. And now we're just kind of looking at the extra little signings that's been going on this week. Veach has been busy. And it yeah. uh, looks like he's got uh, quite a few undrafted free agents that he's signed. Invited a lot of bodies to minicamp. It, it's looking like he's been busy. There's also been some news with Melvin Ingram uh, with the tender thing that they've done with him, which I didn't even really know existed until now. And then also there's a little bit of Honey Badger news he signed with the Saints. But did he get the last laugh on Kansas City for not offering him a contract? So we'll get to that more in a minute. Uh, but first things first, the new look Kansas City Chiefs for the draft picks, Mike. Let's Let's talk about how they are looking in comparison to the rest of the NFL and particularly the AFC West or just the AFC. How, how are you feeling about this team coming out of the draft with, uh, with our rookies? Yeah. So I took, uh, well, we, we had took a long look at their roster and we honestly didn't think wide receiver was that like horrible to be honest. I know a lot of people thought it was just absurd. I seen a, uh, a thing on Facebook today where they had put us in the top five worst wide receiver classes, like that's pre-draft. Ridiculous. And that is ridiculous. The, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And so, uh, but with the addition of Sky Moore, I think he's going to come in and I think he will do well. I think he, I think he's explosive. I think he does what we need him to do. I think our receiver room got better. Um, defensively, obviously we got better. Veach was laser focused on getting the DBs and the safeties and just, that whole back end of our defense looking good. Um, he found us a a linebacker that is like awesome. Like death row is the man. Like he's, he's going to produce like instantly he's going to hit you. And, uh, Carl Loftus on that defensive line. I mean, our defensive line got an upgrade as well. So I think we sat back and watched the AFC West spend until they couldn't spend anymore. And they got a bunch of guys that are at the end of their careers and Veach just kind of kicked his feet up on his desk and laughed at him and then took, you know, 10 draft picks or whatever he took and and got the roster younger, and I think we're better. Absolutely, man. So Veach nailed it, really, while the rest of the league was spending all their money on aging players. I think Brett Veach has got the Kansas City Chiefs in a spot that not a lot of the rest of the NFL is in. Like, this team set up for success for at least the next five years right now. And a lot of teams can't say that they went out and, you know, spent all the money in their little bank account for, you know, 30, 33 year old players. And now we got a bunch of 21 year olds in here. that are looking promising and I'm with you. I think the wide receiver room overall looks much better than it did last season. And people think you're crazy. If you say that just because we don't have Tyree kill anymore. But when you look at the big picture, like we don't have Demarcus Robinson running backwards anymore. Uh, we don't, you know, Byron Pringle, I'm not going to dog on Byron Pringle too much. He, he was okay, but he wasn't never really reached the potential that people thought he could. And then he's done went and got himself in trouble already uh, at his new team. And then, I mean, now we have MBS who can still blow the top off a of defense, but he's also standing at six, four. Uh, we have, McCole Hardman, who we've all seen and know uh, has the ability to blow a top off a of defense, uh, kill it in the screen game, just super fast. Then we have Juju, who can take the balls over the middle. He's going to play more physical. He's going to block like crazy. And then, of course, we're bringing in Sky Moore, who offers a lot uh, in the vein of Tyree Kill. He's not Tyree Kill, per se, but I don't expect him to be, and I wouldn't really want him to be. I think I like what he offers with, you know, sure hands, super quick burst and just the reliability there's awesome for a young guy like that so i do like that and on defense obviously when they're going in that direction of you know smash mouth hit you right in the face and let you know about it kind of thing and so i was thinking about it we got the death row in the middle with uh leo chanel willie gay 
and Nick Bolton. And then if you get past death row, you get to the executioners, which is Justin Reed and Brian Cook. So what are we calling the front for here? We need a name for them. We do. We do. They can be like the, uh, I don't know, like the prison guards or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up with something and we'll get back we'll, to that. Yeah, we'll come up with something a little cooler than that. But, yeah, this defense is just – I'm excited to see. I think I'm more excited to see what the defense is going to look like than the offense. I think with the offense, I mean, as long as you have Andy Reid calling plays, you know, you're going to have enemy. You've got uh, – I forget his name. It's slipping my mind. The dude that come back from Chicago, Nagy. Nagy. I think with him – I think with just Patrick Mahomes, I think seeing our offensive line come back and probably get stronger with Kennard possibly at some point in the season. I think I know what we're going to get with the offense. The offense was always going to be solid. So that's why I was never like worried over the Tyree kill thing. Um, I'll post this video and I'm sure you all have seen it, but I was watching the NFL network last night and they were showing a replay of the, um, the first game in week 17 against Cincinnati. And, uh, Patrick Mahomes just launches one down the field, 65 yards. Tyree Kill goes up for it, lets it bounce off his chest, and just completely falls to the ground. And I was like, you know, that's what I'm not going to miss with Tyree Kill. Right. Like, that that one play changed the whole outcome of the game because from then on, Cincinnati had come back on us. You know what I'm really going to miss about Tyree Kill? Let's be honest here. I'm going to miss uh, his ability after the catch. Just because his sheer speed, he could sometimes break open small plays into big touchdowns. I'm going to miss that. Just that undeniable, one-of-a-kind speed. Obviously, that's going to be missed. But, I mean, really, I think his personality on the field might be missed more than his play on the field because Tyreek had the best end zone celebrations. And he was just all around just like a pep in the step to the team. But, you know, you didn't really see that there towards the end. He kind of just walked around like his dog had just died the whole playoffs. And, I mean, uh, granted, not the Bills game. Everybody was hyped at the Bills game. But, I mean, the the Bengals game, it was just like uh, that play at halftime, it just like ended an era of the Chiefs or something. It was insane. Yeah, like we had talked about that before after the season. And the second half, we come out of the locker room and we just looked defeated. Like there wasn't a player on that team that looked like they wanted to be there. So that's why we kind of give a little, you know, did something happen at halftime or whatever. I think those reports come to be – false right according to the chiefs but, but hey you know, hey we the, don't know the, the tides have turned we have a brand spanking new look in kansas city and i'm excited for this new era Me it's too. kind of it's kind of second wave patrick mahomes like the first era of mahomes in kansas city has now come to an end and now we're getting into the second era and i'm excited to see what happens with this new team um i don't won't, think i don't think it have... be amazing to see 90s era defense with like dick vermil style offense like wouldn't that just be the perfect beautiful sight to see because in kansas city it seems like we always get one side of the ball and the other never lives up right but it would be so great to I have feel like this, this team is heading in the direction to where we have both sides of the ball we still have the explosive offense that is just insane and we're also going to have a defense that'll hit you in the mouth and i love it it's just not going to be I think if we're going to fade away from that Ben don't break crap on defense. And I think it's going to be more of three and outs. You know, or, you know, if you catch that ball over the middle, you're getting punished for it. So teams are going to think a little bit differently about that and things like that. I, I love the direction it's going. I'm super excited. So outside of the rookies we got from the draft, we have signed for some undrafted free agents, obviously the most popular one and the one that most people are pumped about because it's insane value. If this guy, can stay healthy and that's justin ross wide receiver from clemson i mean the kid was amazing his uh freshman year at clemson i mean he you know t higgins was playing second fiddle to him a lot of the time there in clemson trevor lawrence loved throwing a ball to justin ross and justin ross had some big games and he really stepped up in big moments like you saw prime time justin ross in the in the college playoffs and then he even went you know justin ross actually played high school in alabama And then he kind of surprised everybody by going to Clemson instead of Alabama. And then he went back in the national championship game, just really rubbed it in their nose. Just absolutely had a monster game, was making circus catches the whole time. I mean, there's a lot of potential with Justin Ross. And I see that Chiefs Kingdom is super excited about it. I really hope that they're not like blowing it too much out of proportion, though, and putting too much expectation on Ross. I don't want to see that kind of thing. 
but I mean, they, they do have reason to be excited. Do they not? Yeah. Justin, or uh, yeah, Justin Ross is, um, super talented. Like we've said that from the beginning, I think maybe the first mock we ever did, we took him in the second round. We took him in the second round. He was yeah. supposed to be a second, third round talent and his, uh, his injury history just kind of come down a little bit and, uh, it brought him off most boards. Um, he, I think he has an ACL injury in his career. I think he's broken a foot. Um, he's got the neck injury, the spinal cord injury. Doctors have cleared him to play, but it's one of those things where it's like, we have great, tamper yeah. your expectations a little bit because anything could happen, but he does have all the talent in the world. And I hope him much success because that's a weapon right there that basically we got for nothing. We have great team doctors, and I mean, if they're saying he's ready to go, I fully believe that he's ready to go. I'm not too worried about the injuries. I'm more worried about people just putting way too many expectations on his shoulders, uh, expecting him to come out and be like, you know, this elite receiver right off the bat. I think if everybody just chills a little bit and, and he stays healthy, I think Justin Ross will be uh, a, an amazing contributor to the team. So I'm super pumped about that. Um, any other undrafted free agents that you saw that Kansas city has signed that you're excited about? I have one in particular and I'll let you go ahead and see if you have any, and then I'll talk more about the one I'm thinking of. Um, I think the one I'm kind of looking forward to, I don't know if he's even going to make the team, let's be honest, but, uh, Christian Clark from Alabama state, Frank Clark's little brother got an invite to camp. He did. And that's, that's just kind of cool. You know, to be able to play with your brother, maybe that will, ignite frank clark that look like he cares because sometimes it looks like that guy don't even want to play anymore so no kidding maybe hey if he does make the team and he does get some playing time if they don't play baby shark every time he comes onto the field in arrowhead i'm going to be a little disappointed that's a perfect opportunity dude hey that could be fun he's baby um, shark they also brought in a uh, boo smith from missouri wide receiver yeah i saw that uh yeah so that's a hometown kind of guy there. And, uh, you know, they brought in Nunnally from Western Michigan. He played a little bit with, uh, with a uh, sky Moore. They've brought in a few guys. There's a uh, Mike Rose, the linebacker. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, I thought Mike Rose should have been drafted out of Iowa state. He was at least on my board, uh, uh, uh you know, like a mid sixth round and he just kind of got overlooked. And, uh, I've noticed that with this draft a lot, a lot of guys that we felt could have had some value and they just kind of got overlooked. I think it spoke to how deep this draft was like at the top, there wasn't like amazing, amazing talent, but it was a super deep draft. And I think some of these UDFAs could hit man. Absolutely. Like I know. mean, I was super high on Josh Jove as a corner. I know a lot of people weren't, I was, I liked his tape and everything. And he ended up going undrafted. I think he ended up with the Eagles as an undrafted free agent, but Funny thing about that is that is who Justin Ross was burning up in that national championship game <laughs> was Josh yeah. Job. To and me, it's crazy I, because yeah, hey, when you watch that film, Justin Ross was a way better player. Well, that's what goes to show you how good Justin Ross is because Josh Job is not a pushover. I seriously thought Josh Job would be about a fourth rounder, somewhere between a fourth and sixth round. I mean, the dude's got amazing length, like the wing, wingspan's crazy. He's explosive. He's a very good athlete, and I thought that, you know, he's a pretty good corner. I, I really liked him, and the fact that Justin Ross went out there and dominated him, that gives me all the hope in the world. But uh, there is one undrafted free agent that Kansas City signed, and I'm excited to see, A, if he makes the roster, B, how he'll be utilized, and that is Jerry and Ely, uh, running back from Ole Miss. He uh, he runs like a 4-4. He's super fast. He's a little small. But he does have good hands, and he offers a lot of catching the ball out of the backfield. Uh, he was fun to watch in college. I know we had to watch him a few times in, in the SEC. and uh, Definitely a playmaker. I'm excited to see how they're going to use him. I know he has a lot of return ability, so they might they might use him in the return game, kind of a special teams player. I have a feeling if he makes a team, it might be a little bit like, kind of like a Darwin Thompson. But I think he offers more than Darwin, actually, when it comes to – wasn't he drafted to play baseball too? Jerry either was drafted by the MLB. I don't know who drafted him, but yeah, he, he's got a baseball career to fall back on if this don't work out. Yeah, I believe you're right. I did read that somewhere, but uh, I'm excited to see how that goes, man. So undrafted free agents, I mean, they're a shot in the dark. Everybody knows that, but some of these guys actually have really good, uh, talented, you know, footage that we've seen. We've seen them play. We know they're good. 
So uh, I'm excited to see how all that pans out, man. So we'll, we'll dig more into that later on when we know more about what's going on. I think they're actually getting ready to go into rookie minicamp, like what, next week? Uh, this weekend coming up. This so weekend? by the time everybody's hearing this on Friday, it'll be, you know, this evening, I think they're reporting. So, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll get more on that. Uh, let's move on just a little bit. Uh, we also had, I can't remember what it was called, like a UFA tender or something like that, that Brett Veach went ahead and uh, tagged on Melvin Ingram, which basically, Mike, you might have the details to this, but just, you know, in a nutshell, he has a certain date to sign with another team. If he doesn't, he's automatically ours for, say, $4.4 million a year or something like that. Uh, yeah. For one um, year. ESPN reports this. Um, I'll just read it. It's like two paragraphs. It says the UFA tender is rarely used. It was last used by the Giants in the year 2020, so it's not very used. Um, I think the Ravens actually used it just the other day as well on Justin Houston, by the way, which they'll use them on aging guys. You know, it, it, it's something about that. But it says, um, so if either player be Houston or Ingram, so in this case we're going to talk about Ingram, if he signs with a new team before July 22nd, or the first day of training camp, which is later than July 22nd, the signings would count towards the NFL compensatory formula, which means we would get a compensatory pick. And then it says, if they don't sign by the deadline, the teams would retain exclusive negotiating rights to the respective player at 110% of their 2021 salary. So for Melvin Ingram, that would be worth $4.4 million. So we would okay, get him for cool. $4.4 million. That's what I thought. So good deal there. Do you think he'll sign anywhere else before that deadline? What's he had? He's had one meeting with another team, I believe, right? So uh, it it's a long shot. I think his other meeting was the Dolphins, right? Uh, yeah, he had a meeting with the Dolphins a while back, but I never heard anything out of it. I don't know if he signs before camp. So maybe Veach is using this as a uh, leverage tool to be like, hey, if you don't sign, then, you know, we're going to get you for $4 million. And that's a steal with Melvin Ingram, especially like being able to mentor Carl Loftus. And I don't know. I mean, I think Ingram showed last year, he has enough fuel left in the tank to make a big difference. So. Right. I think I a team, I think a team could take a shot on them. If they don't, I'm, I'm more than happy to have them back in KC. And if do they think, do, that's a compensatory, yeah. probably a third or fourth round. So. Yeah. So it was a super smart move by Brett Veach. But I would like to have him back, like you were saying, uh, mentor and Carl Loftus. That would be huge having somebody like Melvin Ingram working with him in his rookie year. Uh, that'd be great if he was in the room with Melvin Ingram, Frank Clark, and all those guys. I think it'd be a, a good thing for him. And I, obviously, Carl Loftus has a, a a big ceiling, and I think it'd be great to have that kind of leadership on that defensive line there. So, uh, moving on from Melvin Ingram. Uh, there's just a little bit of news on the Honey Badger. He is signed with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, I don't really have the details on that contract or anything. I know a lot of Chiefs fans are really bummed out about it, and they're so sad and everything. But, I mean, really, uh, no worries from this side of Chiefs camp. Over here at All Chiefs Up, we, we kind of done with Tyron. But uh, he did – a lot of people are saying he got the last, last, uh, last laugh on the Chiefs for uh, not offering him a contract. Uh, and, and by doing that, or by saying that, what, what they mean is he actually waited two minutes past the deadline to sign his contract with the Saints just to ensure that Kansas City would not get a compensatory pick for him. Uh, if that's the truth and that's really what he was doing, I think that was pretty petty on the Honey Badger's part. But, I mean, he screams petty, does he not? He does. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. If that is true, I hope he stumps his toe and he can't play all year. I mean, that's probably going to happen anyway. I don't know if you guys watched him last year, but he really didn't do anything. All these people that are like, I'm, a, I'm I'll be the first to say I want to tire him back as well. But the more I really watched the tape from last year and stuff, Tyron didn't even try. Uh, he wasn't getting his jersey dirty. He wasn't hitting people. I mean, he was literally just smacking at them. And I mean, sometimes he looked downright pathetic. And then other times it's like he would, you know, he would blow assignments too. And then you'd have Daniel Sorensen, who's, you know, notorious for blowing assignments. And he would just be throwing his hands up and, you know, things see like that. Honey, see Honey Badger back here? Yeah. I well, always, hey, look, Honey Badger, he helped us get a championship ring. And that's cool. 
but the way that he wants to come at our fans and the way he kind of said, I didn't even really try because I was in a contract year. Yeah. And then if he's going to pull this compensatory thing just so we can't get a draft pick, like if you want to be that petty about it, it's like, bro, yeah. I, you know, I have no tolerance for that kind of crap. It's like, we didn't break up. This is not like you broke up with your girlfriend, but I feel like he's that petty. Like what is it's happening? It's a business, man. You're an aging he, safety he, that wants a lot of money. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Is he going to key our cars next? Like what's he trying to pull? No kidding, dude. Like, I don't know. Like you said, I always have a little soft spot in my heart for the honey badger. I mean, he was amazing. Probably one of the best free agent signings that, you know, we've ever made in Kansas city. And he helped us win a super bowl. I mean, that not enough, you can't say enough about that. Uh, and he was excellent, but this last season with him and the way he acted and the way he's carried himself. I mean, I'm kind of past it, man. I'm, I'm hey, over it. And yeah. Didn't you change the subject. Well, it's not a change the subject, but Hey, didn't you buy me a Tyron Matthew Jersey for Christmas one year? I did. If I can find it, should we give it away? Should we do a giveaway? Are let's you do give it. it all to? Who wants let's that? Let's do an all chiefed up giveaway. Surely somebody out there wants it. Like we'll come up with something and we may try to give that away. I don't know. I'm just not going to wear it anymore. He's done pissed me off. So yeah, if, I mean, if somebody wants it. We'll figure something out. We'll give it away. We'll have a nice little all chiefed up giveaway. It'll be like Christmas in July. So my thing is, if he's going to be that petty and everything, he's got exactly what he deserved. Yeah. It's all great. And all you get to go play for your home team and that's cool. But Hey, New Orleans is not going to be a winning team and you're stuck with Daniel Sorensen again. So jokes on you, honey badger. We don't need another seventh round pick anyway. So whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, we've just about touched base on everything that Veach has done. Oh no, no, no. We got one more. Veach traded for Lonnie Johnson. Yeah. I was getting ready to say, Oh, okay. One. What do you so, think about that, Steve? That's a Kentucky guy coming in. I like it. What's our deal with Kentucky man, guys lately? Hey, it's that it's that all chiefed up. From yeah, the we're rubbing to off. the Red Sea connection, baby. I've been rubbing off on Veach. He's yeah. secretly listening to these. I know he is. He is, and I think maybe you know he's been thinking about dinner with you as well. Mm. So it might I, it might it might be coming I, up. I think about dinner with him all the time. Let's be honest. In a non, you know, manly. Man. sexual way i think of dinner with brett beach i don't want us to think that you know i'm trying to steal it from his wife for that i'm into that it's cool if you are but this guy's not so it's not that thing but yeah i think he's been watching it i think he's been listening i think he secretly listens to us so I'm, let's put it in the atmosphere let's put out a player in the atmosphere let's throw something out steve let's see if beach does it let's just think of something really quick here i have um, nothing I think that Veach should bring in another safety from the UDFA. Yusuf pool. Corker. Uh, has he been signed yet? I don't know. I don't care who it is. I just want to see if he'll bring in another UDFA safety before Friday. If he does that, I know he's listening because we don't we don't have enough defensive backs. He's only drafted ten. He's only traded for three, and he yeah, probably like, like fifteen of them. Like this guy, we're going all we're going eleven defensive back front all this right, year. But quit quit getting off subject here. We're talking about Lonnie Johnson. So Lonnie Johnson, uh corner at UK, absolutely amazing corner at UK. He actually, you know, shot up the draft boards the year that he came out and ended up going in the early second round, I believe. I mean, he's a big, long, fast corner. Uh makes plays on the ball and you know, a lot of people's talking down on him, especially like uh, Houston, Texas fans, Houston Texans fans are talking trash on him and being like, oh, well, he's garbage anyway. I mean, if you look at his uh, ratings from last year on PFF, they are garbage. But you had he you had him on, uh, first of all, a failure of an organization with Houston Texans who moved him out of his position and stuck him into a safety role. And it was just a disaster, and, and and they blamed it all on Lonnie Johnson. Like, get this man back to the corner position and let him work. And I guarantee you he's going to be serviceable, and he could possibly be on the field quite a bit for the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, didn't he have, like, three interceptions last year? I think it maybe led the Texans. I'm not for sure. I mean, let's be honest. You get drafted to the Texans, your career goes in the toilet. Like, Especially, nobody pays I mean, attention to you. They're a dumpster fire. They took him out of his normal position and stuck him back in safety, which is cool for the simple fact that he's coming back in with Justin Reed and they have that uh, relationship and everything. So that that's really cool too. But I, I don't think that Brett Veach is planning on using him as a safety. 
No, what was the deal? What was the beef he had with Travis Kelsey that everybody's talking about? He had to squash as soon as he come back. Oh, like, what was that about? I don't know. If you just, I don't think it was anything big. I don't, there might be something I missed, but uh, from what I can tell, they just kind of spat a little bit in one of them playoff games, maybe or something. It might have just been a regular season well, the, game. But yeah, Texans haven't been in the playoffs. So was it maybe that yeah, year they, that we had? Year, yeah, they were. It was a year that the Chiefs came back from like 24-0. Oh, you're right. And if you, and if you remember right, Lonnie Johnson actually had a pick six there, picked up a fumble or something, scored a touchdown. Hey, game. I remember that game. I was there. We drove eight hours to watch that in the snow, and oh, Steve over here got sick and had to sit in the hotel room that while was, we watched the greatest game in Chief playoff history possibly. And it's funny because I would normally say, or anybody would say, I don't care how sick I was, I would go to the game. That's the sickest I've ever been in my life, dude. That was insane. Like, I could not. There was no hey, way. you may have had COVID before COVID was COVID. That's what I was thinking. It could have been because it was in January of the COVID year, was it not? Yeah, I think so. So that's a possibility. But, yeah, I was super sick. It was terrible, and I missed the game. But I was sitting in the hotel room, and as sick as I was, everyone around me in the hotel room probably hated my guts because when that I felt to come back the whole time, I was never uncomfortable being down 24 0 with that team with Patrick Mahomes. You just never really feel like you're out of it. And I, I didn't have that overwhelming doom feeling you'd normally have as a chiefs fan. I never got it. And then I just knew, I just knew we were coming back, man. And it was great. No, so. like uh, the year that we went to the Colts and watched the playoff game with Alex Smith and he blew yes. the halftime lead. Like we all knew that was coming. We were but sitting around Mahomes, at halftime talking about it. We were right. I'm talking about it. We were telling Colts fans like, Hey guys, it's not over yet. Like we will blow this. And they should, they totally did. But then like with Mahomes, we get down 24 or something and we're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like we've been we got here a shot here. Yeah. Good stuff. Hey, that was a great game. Like when we all got to sing Garth Brooks, friends in low places. And Steve was just at, you know, in his hotel room eating $50, like DoorDash deliveries. Yeah, I'm at the Marriott getting five guys DoorDash to me while I'm sick as a dog trying to eat a big cheeseburger, Andy Reid style. But maybe that was the juju that really made it, made maybe. it happen, you know, hey, but uh, man, it was a fun time, fun time. It was. All right, man, we'll go ahead and wrap this thing up for now. We will be back at you soon. Uh, podcast will be coming out on Monday morning as well. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you guys subscribe, hit the notification. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining us and make sure to follow us on all social media. Go to Linktree slash All Chiefed Up. And you can see all of our links. Go to our website, allchiefedup.com. We'll probably have some articles coming on there soon. Uh, anything you got in the works, Mike? Not really. I might start throwing up some articles again. It's kind of tough without the draft, you know. It kind of feels like we don't have nothing to talk about, but we I do. guess with rookie mini camp coming up, we'll have something. We do. So yeah, I'm done. I don't, I don't have nothing else to say. These chief right. fans out here, man, just go Justin <laughs> Ross. Thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to All Chiefed Up. Be sure to subscribe and follow on all social media at All Chiefed Up. <laughs>